uh, in the seventh district, we had, as we talked about earlier, Abigail Spamberger versus Nick Freitas. Uh, uh, Alice, what did you, uh, uh, what did you take away from that race? What, should, what was the lesson from that race? She was, uh, she did about one point worse in the rural counties, about one point better in Chesterfield and Henrico, pretty close to what she did last time around. I mean, let's remember that this is an R plus six district, right? And it was a Republican district up until Congresswoman Spamberger flipped it in 2018. This used to be Eric Cantor's old district, followed by Dave Bratt. So this is in no way a Democratic district, right? Congresswoman Spamberger is a phenomenal candidate. She ran a phenomenal campaign. And she did very well in the suburban areas in Henrico and Chesterfield. And so, you know, it's easy. I think sometimes these after, uh, these after elections um, case analyses, right? Let's just remember that that used to, that used to be a Republican district. It was never one of ours. Well, Rob, to that point, is she just renting the district until two years from now when you don't have Trump on the ballot and a, and a more normal Republican electorate comes out to, to take it back? Well, I, wouldn't, I would strongly suggest she not get comfortable in that seat. And, <laughs> and I think a, a real question is going to be what, what happens with that district in redistricting. Mm -hmm. uh, but look, the, the, the strength of Spanberger's campaign was her fundraising. And... Uh, she raised money from predominantly from ACLU, from out of the state, from the same progressive funders that she is now blasting on her uh, conference uh, calls with the, her Democratic colleagues. They're the ones who put the money into that race. Mm -hmm. uh, it was those funders who put the money into the outside groups who outspent us by about $4 million. Uh, and she's going to win by a few thousand votes. Uh, and, you know, she gets credit for winning, sure. Uh, but, you know, should she get comfortable there? No. Um, and, you know, I think her hope should be that they change that district uh, to help her out because look, the, the R plus six in these, these PVI designations just don't, they're not applicable in 2020 based on what happened in 20, you know, 2008 and 2012. Mm -hmm. uh, and so, you know, we'll see what happens with, when they redraw the maps. And look, she's going, she's going to have to have a voting record in a house that is likely only going to have about a 10 or 12 seat Democratic majority. So we'll see how her, her newfound views on centrism and the direction of the party are going to match up with the reality of serving in Congress in, in that Congress.